Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be performing a modification to a Kodak ZI6 video camera. Here looking at it is pretty much the final product of how this will look. It's an external mic mod. And of course Kodak has a ZI8 and ZI10 um, play touch video camera that has an external mic hookup. But those two cameras take um, lithium ion batteries while the ZI6 takes double A's. You can also find the ZI6 relatively cheap on eBay for around 30 bucks. Not too bad of a price. This one here had a cracked screen so I took a piece off of a DXG579V and its screen. Well actually the original LCD from this camera which was still good and just modified things a little bit. But that's not, that's not what we're doing in this video. We're going to be doing the external mic mod. Basically on the side of the camera you have a switch. A double pull switch that allows you to switch between internal mic. Let me get you better focus here. And external mic. And on top I have a mic jack which plugged in as a fake um, Sony ECM DS70P which you can get these things for like like a buck or so off eBay now the only downside with the ZI6 is it's not true stereo it's actually mono but it plays to the computer as a stereo like configuration but it's not true stereo this is a true stereo mic but the camera is not true stereo so basically what I'm going to be doing here is showing you how to make use of both of the mics in this microphone. So now I go ahead and switch cameras so I can see the stock camera which I'm filming with right now. This camera I'm shooting with right now is about to get modified. Here's a stock ZI6. That's what it looks like. This is your stock ZI6 video camera. There is some hot glue in the front of this right here where I actually had a wide angle lens glued on. It was not something that I could actually purchase from somewhere. It was, a, it was actually a lens piece, fisheye lens piece out of a camcorder of some kind that is just stuck on here. Basically, just a little disclaimer here. Well, this disclaimer really applies with mainly just with um, regular digital cameras is in regular digital cameras you have a flash capacitor in the flash circuit but with these cameras you don't have much anything to worry about because this one here does not have flash for the photo option so it's perfectly safe to work in now also you do want to make sure the batteries are out and what's amazing is with these with the Kodak ZI6 is how close similar it is to the DXG 567V in terms of hardware but does so much better in terms of video quality in fact um, the only downside I believe I could say with the Kodak ZI6 is it's a little bit wider and the lens assembly doesn't put out a very wide angle view so I'm going to be taking the lens assembly from the DXG 567V this is my old camera I'm going to be taking this lens assembly and doing a swap with this one. So that way at least I have one Kodak ZI6 with a wide angle lens or at least somewhat wider angle lens. That's one, that's one thing the DXG567V does have over the um, ZI6. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Also, you will need a double pin, double pull, or single pin, double pull, some mini slide switch like this, these here. You can get two on Radio Shack for like $3 or something. Not too bad. They even give you screws for them, but um, with this mod, they're going to have to be hot glued in because the way the mod is anyways you will also need a 3.5 millimeter mic jack this is a little um, PCB that came out of a computer case a while back 
you notice I've already taken one of the um, jacks off. That's because now it's on my ZI-6 I'm shooting video with. Here's the other one. This one here was actually for the headphone jack, but these are identical in terms of connectivity. And before I go ahead and tear the camera apart, let me show you a diagram. Now I lost my original drawing, so I had to print it out from the video image. This is what it looks like. I know it's a little dark to see because it's actually from a um, picture and it's a toner printer, um, laser printer, monochrome laser printer. But um, you can kind of see how this works. Basically, you have a sister board inside the camera that has um, power inputs, speaker out, and mic, and mic inputs. For the mic, it's a positive negative setup. What you would do is the positive lead will go soldered into the middle pin of this switch. And basically depending on which position the switch is in, it'll either put output to here or here. One side will go to the internal mic, other side will go to the mic jack which goes which goes to the external mic. Like so. You can see in my diagram here. This goes into the jack. And basically as I mentioned earlier, I mentioned the way this mic mod is going to work is it's going to allow um, to use mono and stereo mics. When using a stereo mic, both mics will get used. They'll be wired in parallel. So the positive will get hooked up to channel A and channel B, and the output, which I call a C here, will return to the return on this board. Basically, the uh, negative sides of both mics will go wired together into this negative. My chair is actually getting on my nerves today. It keeps falling down. I have to keep jacking it back up. Anyways, it's just a general idea of how this looks. Anyways, for more information about that, feel free to watch my original mic mod video. But in this video, I'm going to demonstrate doing the task. So that being said, we'll go ahead and start tearing down the camera. You'll need a nice small screwdriver for this. I'm going to set this camera to the side so I can see exactly what I'm doing here. The excuse that the focus is out of um, is not correct. If it gets blurry or whatever, manual focus camera, I'm not going to be looking at the LCD the whole time. Now I'm trying to keep what I'm doing inside the video so I can see I'm pretty pr I'm prone to accidentally get out of view. Anyways, here's that screwdriver. This actually comes with my computer's motherboard, the ASRock 87, um, 890 um, FX Deluxe 4 come with this to, to screw on the optional fan. Very nice little screwdriver. Fits these screws perfectly. Now on the Kodak ZI6, you gotta pull off this sticker here. Now obviously the camera is out of warranty, considering the age. This camera is from like 2009 or 2008. Right at the same time the DXG 567V come out. In fact, these cameras are believe manufactured by the same company. And this sticker here is not going to come off easy. And there's a hidden screw. So kiss the serial number goodbye. You won't need it anymore. I got this camera for like 20 something bucks off of eBay, so got a good deal on it. It was an I think it was actually auction based, I can't remember for sure. The one I'm shooting video with now was buy it now for like 30 bucks. It's funny, I paid more for the one that had the broke screen versus the one that was working fine. So I'll take this screw out. there to the side. If you're doing this to a DXG567V, you gotta pull a little rubber things off to get access to the screws. But I'm not kidding you, these cameras go together so close similarly. It's crazy. In fact, these um, HD and AV out cables from my DXG567V will work just fine with this camera. This camera puts out component 
um, only because it's a 720p. Not fancy enough to have the HDMI out, but you get the idea. Make sure you see what I'm doing here. Just took that screw out right there. You got a screw up here. <clears throat> Take that one out. Well, it's cool as I saw a um, demonstration from a lady online changing the screen in her ZI6. So that's really, before I even bought this camera, that's how I found out they were just so, that this is so close similar to the DXG567B. There's two screws in the battery compartment. Be sure you see those. What's funny is in the ZI6, they're black. If I didn't mention already, since these cameras are so close similar, the sister board, the secondary board that has the mic and everything, is identical to the DXG567V. The camera I'm shooting video with has the same mic board that was in my DXG. I just switched it over. I think that's all the screws. Now, of course, you'll be careful with this door because if it because it has a little pin that can slide out, and the screen can I mean the screen spring can pop out, and if that pops out, it's not easy to get back in. I just usually just leave it out, so you end up losing the. Um, auto opening door, if you want to call it that. And another thing, I forgot to mention this earlier, you will lose, which you obviously saw, you will lose this USB thing to make room for the switch and the mic jack. But with me, that's not a big deal because I just take the SD HC card out of the camera and stick it into the computer to get my files. So now that being said, Go ahead and pull this off. Double check and make sure all the screws are out. Guys, I believe this is the first time I've ever tore this one open. So, here we go. Actually, you're, actually it is because I know because I had to take that um, serial number off. It comes apart fairly easy. Now, of course, when you're working inside this camera, remember, it's the um, same thing as, as it goes with computers. Be careful of electric static discharge. And, of course, um, you won't get too many thumbprints on the screen, otherwise you have to clean it off really good. It's been a while. We have a screw. Let's see. Actually, on the ZI6, the LCD comes out. It just sits inside the camera. I like that because I can just set it to the side and not have to worry about it getting messed up. Just pull back these latches and just pulls right out and set it to the side. Set it far to the side. You don't want that to get messed up. We have four screws holding this metal piece on. And just so you know, um, this little ground cable, we'll have to cut that off because this plastic behind here goes to the USB thing. And to be honest with you, this whole ground thing is not even included on my camera because <laughs> um, <clears throat> I ended up cutting it off when I switched everything over and it's it's never had a problem. So if your ground cable gets cut off, it's not going to hurt anything. Trust me, from past experience, the DXG567V doesn't even have one. Place 
So let's go to the side. This whole metal piece will just lift right out. Place that to the side. And these screws that go with it. Now here is the main PCB and the USB jack. I'm going to take off some more screws. I know this one here has got to go. Now, of course, when I put this camera right there, you're going to have at least two or three screws left over because of this USB thing no longer being present. You're going to see some redneck um, modifications here shortly. Stay tuned for that. It's where things can get crazy. Trust me, I can get crazy when I want to modify cameras. Oh, look, this ground cable just separates. Good. That way I can still leave this one present. Now, let's go ahead and take out the PCB. Pull this ticker back. Make sure there's no more hidden screws. I think that's it for the screws. And of course, these two screws here hold the lens assembly to the PCB. I'm trying to double check here. Make sure everything is out. My bad, there was one screw here. These screws can blend right in with everything else on the PCB. I think that's the only one that has to come out. Now, of course, be careful when pulling this out. You would want to pull from the side that has the SD reader. And obviously, there cannot be an SD card installed. Because it sticks out past the plastic lip. And be gentle pulling this out because, basically, you have two plugs on your secondary board. That plug into the main board. One here and one there. And your um, USB cable plugs into this too. We'll go ahead and unplug that because it will never have to be plugged in again. Now just to show you guys an example of just how close similar DXG... I mean how close similar the DXG and the Kodak ZI6 are. There's an example. Notice the small eye, if you want to call it that, on this lens and notice the much larger one on this lens. Here's where things get pretty fun. Go ahead and take out this. We got a screw here I gotta take out. Then they're pretty good too. I'll bear down to get it out. And I think that's all the screws that go to the USB module. Now on the um, DXG567V, you get to more or less use a pair of dots and just break it out. But on the ZI6, it's a little bit different. If I remember correctly. Got a screw here. 
these reindeer are really good too. If you run across a screw like this, just carefully bear down to get it out. Because you don't want the screwdriver to slip. And it will. At least the way my luck is. You go ahead and get a pair of dikes handy because you're going to need them. Alrighty. So now, you want to carefully. Well, first, let's get this USB module out. You want to carefully take your dikes. Insert them in here, like so. It may take some pressure, but you have to fracture that plastic. And of course, they're with the pin that goes in this door. And actually, no, that's the pin that goes in the USB module. Put that to the side, even though we don't need it anymore. That's the first part. The USB module should come out. A little bit of wiggling. And the entire assembly should come out. Now, you take your dikes again, and you want to carefully insert them right about here, and separate the plastic. What you can do is wiggle the plastic back and forth, that will weaken it. After you put a spot in with the dikes, now if this is up, we'll actually have to um, take loose the secondary board to get access to the wires that go to the internal microphone. And of course, you're going to need some hot glue. Because this right here will need to be glued. Actually, I'm. Um, no, you doesn't reinsert the screws. And that takes care of it. So, that being said. I personally am going to take off this silver piece. You may have seen my other camera had it removed. The reason why I'm doing this is because this silver reflects sunlight. And I do a lot of videos of thunderstorms, sunsets, you name it, inside of a weather case. And what happens is sunlight enters the front of the case, hits this and reflects against the glass or the plexiglass in the front and glares up the video. So. That's why I liked having the DXG 567V in its black case so much. So this comes off and then your Kodak ZI6 is completely black. Or at least non-reflective. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this silver piece like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to separate it. More redneck camera modding craziness about to happen. There is one screw that has to be removed. I'm going to take out that screw.
Now we're going to actually pry this up. Be careful because that um, glass cover there is very thin and can fracture very easily. And of course, you want to keep that for for future use. So that being said, let's go ahead and start pulling this out. Not gonna be the easiest thing. I'm gonna get a flathead screwdriver. But of course, as I added disclaimer, be careful when you're dealing with a flathead screwdriver. You don't want that stabbing into your finger. It's happened to me a couple of times in the past. And trust me, it did not feel very good. So just take my advice and be very careful. Because what I'm having to do is there are plastic tabs. You can see the, the grayish looking tabs in there that hold this front piece on. And those have got to come out. They have to be unsnapped. I've removed a screw located right there to start taking this plastic piece out and grabbing it with the di start it with the dikes and I guess I'll finish it with the dikes too and obviously yes you want to be careful doing this kind of stuff What's funny is how it's coming off this time. A little different than last time. Try to grab that lens piece. And carefully place it over to the side. And of course all I'm going to be using is the glass and I'll get hot glued back here. Funny how with the D ZI6 I gotta go through all this so blacken up my camera. I mean I could just take this off and paint it, but with the DXG56 MV, all I need was a little bit of electrical tape. Aha, there's another screw down there holding that in. So I should have done that after I took this out. No big deal. So that being said, I was gonna get back to the mod. Got two screws holding in the secondary board. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm taking out this screw and this screw. Let me ask if I can carefully lift this up. I need to turn this camera a little bit more. Mm -hmm. That should help. Pull the SD thing out. And the internal mic just lifts right out. That's what we need access to. It's just the internal mic. Gotta pull it out <clears throat> to get access to the cables. Figure out what else is holding, trying to hold this in. We don't necessarily need to take this out, just lift it up to get access to the mic spot on the plastic. And we're going to take out this last screw. That holds in that plastic piece.
So yeah, this camera definitely has some screws left over when we get it back together. For an obvious reason. Alrighty. We need the docks again. Keep this board lifted up as far out of the way as possible. We'll take our docks. Right in here. And squeeze them. They require a lot of pressure. That's some pretty thick plastic. And do this down here. Best one I'm trying to do is get an um, access hole for the wires to go to the switch. Very, very thick plastic on this camera. At least Kodak did have some common sense here. Use some very, very thick plastic. Grab my needle nose to see what I can do with that. <laughs> the things I do for you guys on YouTube with my cameras. Not just Cube Computer Chum, but Bike Geek MDDX too. Now, I'm going to wiggle this back and forth to break it loose. Use the needle noses for that. And then start ripping out the plastic. Now I have a nice, nice hole available for the wires. We can go ahead and push this secondary board back in, back into its place just temporarily. Now, time to go ahead and heat up the soldering iron. Okay, I desoldered the plug from the PCB, the parts PCB, and I cut out the dead terminals in it. These are terminals that don't do anything. Tested everything out with multimeter in um, continuity mode. And I got this dummy tester. Basically, it's another one of those um, um, fake Sony mics, a defective one that Buddy gave me, and what it is I use solder to short the terminals on the W and R on both sides, so more, so both um, si both mics represent a short. So you wouldn't want to plug this in <laughs> to a working camera; it's just for testing a jack. Basically, what I did is I plugged this in and then check for continuity from this terminal and this terminal and basically way all that's going to work is the positive side is going to go solder to this wire and this wire so both of them both wires and negative is going to be soldered to this terminal so that's how it, that's how it works now I'm going to go ahead and Unsolder this mic, or at least the positive side. And I got some dummy wire here to use, with some spare wire. I'm going to grab my wire stripper and cutter, all in one. See how much wire we're going to need. We don't need too much. Just enough to really go to the switch.
That's me plenty. Take a small bite out of both sides. Don't need a whole lot. Just a very small bit. That's what I gotta do here is I gotta um, <clears throat> tin both sides of the wire. And on this side I gotta strip out a bit bigger amount. It's a slightly larger amount. This is how I get soldered into the switch. What I'll actually do is I'll go ahead and solder the this side to the switch first. Put in a small bit of flux on this to kind of get that solder to help stick. This flux is a metal cleaner. try to tin this wire. I can't see what I'm doing, I'm just tinning the wire first. And believe me, that wire gets hot very, very fast. It's like the smaller it is, the faster it will conduct heat. Okay, so I got that wire tinned up. This should be a very, a fairly um, straightforward process. I'm gonna take out one of these switches. Reject my chair. Anytime I'm sitting in this chair, that's what I have to do every about five minutes or so, if even that long. Reject the chair. Anyways, this is what the one switches look like. It's a fairly solid switch too. Not bad for two for three dollars and something. Very well built. In fact, I should have bought these when I done my first camera. And I don't know if I'm going to get everything in video, but I'm trying my best here. Not the easiest thing in the world, I can tell you that. I just verified this is in actually enough wire, and it is. There's plenty there. Keep in mind, I'm not a soldering expert. So, my work is not the best. But it does manage to hold up over time. Like I mentioned. Stuff can get very aggravating real quick when you're soldering. All I was trying to do is straighten that wire out, and here it is <laughs> trying to come back out.
Alright, good enough. Not the best, not the best soldering, but it's in there. Put the positive side in. So that way when the switch is in one direction, it goes one way. Other direction goes the other way. Now I'll go ahead and take another wire. Just do a green wire. Just for the heck of it. Now the switch is pretty easy because it has little holes in terminals. Makes it a breeze to get the wire in there and solder right up to it. Now this jack is going to be a different story. Not going to be very easy. So I'll try to see what I can do. Though I do have a pretty smart idea that might work. That's better. So now, that's how it looks. I'm going to test it for continuity. I'm going to plug in the dummy <laughs> dummy tester. Sitting over here. Plug that in. And use the dummy tester to test it. Lay it down like this. Table's not conducting. At least it's low voltage anyway. Now, See how this works. And we have a connection. Unplug the dummy mic. And as expected, open circuit. Okay, here's an overview of how it's how supposed to be. Sort of, you sort of have it together. Alrighty. There's the switch. There's now the it's jack. Now to go ahead and continue. On you here. can see how it runs back together into the PCB. Not too bad. It was, um, took a while to get it here, but finally managed to get all back together. So let's go ahead and get this camera back together and see how it does. Okay, here's a look at the final product. This is how it looks. And of course, this time I had to use um, clear hot glue because I didn't have any black hot glue available. So it looks kind of crazy. But hey, it works. Works pretty well. I've already done about, let's say, 10 hours worth of time lapse footage with this camera and the weather case. And this is what the weather case looks like. So we can see exactly what I'm talking about here. It's this big case that mounts onto a tripod mount, camera screws inside of it, like this, and I have an external mic on the cover of this window case, and I just plug it right into the camera, just like that. And that way, even though the camera's inside the case, I still have external audio. And if you want to hear how it sounds, feel free to go over to Bike Geek MDDX, you'll see um, You'll get to see John Day how it works. I got some thunderstorm footage I recently uploaded. Feel free, feel free to go check it out. And I have a second Sony ECM DS70P mic to plug in here. And I'm going to use that to demonstrate the external mic versus the internal mic. It's currently set to an internal. By hitting the switch up, I set it to external. And you can do this on the fly, even while you're recording. 
Let's go and demonstrate that. Okay, now I'm shooting a video with the just now modified camera you saw in the video. Of course, as I just mentioned, I did at least 10 hours worth of time lapse footage over the past few days this week. Doing a lot of time lapse footage of clouds, thunderstorms, you name it. So, this is the other camera I've been filming with. That's the original um, ZI6 I did the mod to. And I'm using the external mic on this camera right now, so let's go ahead and switch to, to internal. Okay, now you're hearing how the internal mic sounds. I personally think the Sony mic sounds a little bit better. It's a lot more sensitive in certain kinds of waveforms. Okay, back to external mic. Okay, I'm set to internal. And while the video is recording, I'm going to unplug the Sony mic. I'm going to plug in the mic that's on my weather case. Now this mic is actually from, the, the mic itself is actually from an old Sony Handycam big camcorder from 1997. That's the original mic I used in this weather case. And I have to say it works pretty well. So let me go ahead and switch over and ha let you have a listen to it. Okay, now you're actually hearing me talk through the mic you see in this video right there on the cover. Now you're actually hearing me through the internal mic on the camera. Unplug the weather case mic. Plug the Sony, the fake Sony ECM DS70P mic back in. And switch over to it. Okay, now you're hearing me from the external microphone. So anyways, this gives you a general idea of how this works. And yes, I know it's a very long and probably boring video for some but it's something that I want to tr something you want to try out I didn't show exactly every single part because it was just so drug out and took me a while to get this mod done it was getting pretty it was also getting pretty late at night too so that's why I didn't really film putting the camera back together because of course it was like one o'clock in the morning I was ready to get finished with it do you say that way I could use it the next day so anyways that is how you modify a Kodak ZI6 video camera to have an external mic hookup. Have any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.